This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So hopefully you've taken a little bit of time to go through there and look at your profitable contracts. Uh, now we're just going to move on and see what happens if we have loss-making contracts. And when you are looking at loss-making contracts, uh, that little old lady rears her head again and you know what she's called? She's called prudence. Because prudence states that if we anticipate a loss, then we should recognize that loss immediately. So if we have a loss making contract, then that loss is going to be recognized in full. OK, 100 percent of that loss is recognized. We don't base the loss on a stage of completion uh, like we've seen the profitable contracts before. The loss is recognized in full. OK. So it says here, show how the contract will be accounted for in the statement of profit or loss for the year ended. Is it December X5? Uh, obviously, in the question, you wouldn't know it's a loss making contract until you uh, begin to, to read it. Here it tells us it's loss making. But Evelyn commenced a construction contract in 20X5 that has seen large increases in future costs to complete. Uh, the contract will still be completed on schedule in 20x6, so that's the next year. Uh, and remember, we started it this year, so that's the first year of the project. Uh, the details from the year end of December X5 are as follows. You've got the value of the contract, the cost to date, and the cost to complete. So you can see there that if we're looking at that contract, if you are to work out whether or not it's profitable or loss-making, then if you do 40 less 25 less 20 i think you end up isn't it with a loss of five million dollars okay so that loss even though it's 45 percent complete you do not take 45 percent of the loss you recognize the loss in full so what you would have there if we are looking at the revenue costs and loss remember we now put in 100% of the loss 100% of the loss is 5 million so 5 million dollars is our loss and what we will go through and do there is we recognize the loss in full the revenue we still recognize it based upon a percentage complete. So 45% of the 40 is there is 18. And what we do there is to recognize that loss, we put in the costs as a balancing figure. So that goes in there, isn't it? I think, is it at 23? Okay. So the key bit there that you have is once you've worked out the loss, you first of all recognize the loss immediately 100%. You put in the revenue based upon the cost to complete. And then the third thing that you do is look at the cost as a balancing figure. What on earth is it doing there? I don't know. There we go. Okay. Uh, but that aside, uh, hopefully you found that example okay. Uh, it shouldn't be any more demanding than that within the exam. So maybe loss making contracts are easier than profitable ones, but I'll allow you to think about that in your own time. So let's complete the jigsaw for construction contracts by looking at what happens within the statement of financial position. Uh, we've looked at what happens within profit or loss, thinking about the revenues, the costs, the profit, or if it is a loss making contract, how we recognize that loss in full based upon the concept of prudence. What we have in the statement of financial position is as the contract progresses, we are accumulating an asset, but we need to value that asset, aren't we? Because as we go along, the, the building is getting bigger and bigger as we construct more and more floors and it's becoming more and more complete. Uh, that asset essentially is, is like inventory, isn't it? Uh, but what we do is to distinguish it from just goods that are the sold in the normal course of business, 
we look there at what's referred to as the gross amounts that are due from or, or to your customers because we are constructing an asset for somebody so we know that we are ultimately going to sell it because there is a contract to sell it so to distinguish it from inventory whereby we don't know if we will be able to sell it it's just inventory lying about the warehouse we refer to it as your gross amount due from your customer okay hopefully it will be from the customer and hopefully we haven't gone through there and need to pay some money back to the customer for whatever reason it may be. Uh, what you need to do is you need to learn the pro forma. Uh, so what you do there is you take your costs incurred to date. So whatever costs you have incurred to this point in time, uh, you need to go through there, don't we? And recognize that as an asset because that's what we've spent on the asset whether that's labor, whether that's material. So that's you know, the, the, the physical asset that you have constructed, isn't it? However, what's also going to happen is when you sell that asset, hopefully it will be profitable, won't it? So you are going to add on any recognized profits that you have made. Again, that will be cumulative to date. However, if there is a loss, then you recognize those cumulative losses to date. In questions, it will usually be one or the other. Again, the key bit is that whether it's a profit or it's a loss, it is the cumulative to date figure. Remember, statement of financial position is as at a point in time, isn't it? So what are all the profits that we've recognized in the previous years? Uh, the other one that you've got is your progress billings. What do we mean by progress billings? Uh, well, as your project progresses, uh, you may decide to invoice the customer. And if you are going to go through there and invoice the customer, then you're just doing a bit of a transfer of the assets. So you just credit this gross amount to remove the amount that you have billed your customer. And then if you have billed them, you can recognize your receivable, can't we? So it's a reduction to the gross amount due from the customer. And the reason why is because you have actually invoiced the customer. Okay, so you credit the amount due and debit the receivable. And then obviously, if you receive cash from your customer, you debit bank and credit the receivable. That all makes sense? Reasonably so, I hope. Uh, the key thing that you know you need to do there is that's a pro forma, isn't it? If you have pro formas, learn them. You know, if you learn the pro forma, the question won't, won't challenge you too much within the real exam. Will it? If you don't know the pro forma, you can't answer the question. Can you? Makes sense. Uh, so let's go through uh, last question that you've got there within the notes. Uh, the example on construction contracts. Uh, it goes through there and tells you about is it Noah? and a three-year construction contract, which commenced at the 1st of January, X5. And then at the 31st of December, it has the following balances. So a lot of revenue balances, uh, cost balances, and then your, your progress billings balances. Uh, what the question wants to do after it's told you your percentage complete, uh, prepare extract from the statement of profit or loss and position for the first year of our contract, December X5, as required by IS11 construction contracts. Okay, so if I'm thinking about my pro formas, uh, I'll just split my page in two. Statement of profit or loss on the left. We're looking at revenue, costs, I'll assume it's a profit. Because uh, otherwise it makes it a loss, doesn't it? That's too complicated, isn't it? Within the SFP. Uh, and as we look at the SFP, uh, you've got there, haven't you? Your cost to date. Uh, add on your recognized profits to date. And you deduct. Any 
progress billings and then those progress billings once you have deducted them give you your gross amounts due from your customer isn't it okay uh, so the bit that you've got on the left there your statement of profit or loss is stuff that you've seen previously isn't it so remember what we needed to go through and do is we need to establish if it is a profitable contract isn't it uh, so if we go back to the information you've got your total contract is it the value of 140 uh, the cost that you've incurred at this point in time you've got work completed of 52 you've bought some inventory that you'll use in later years of eight so you've got a total cost of 60 and then you have is it further cost to complete is it there of 48,000 isn't it so what we've got there if we put in a separate working we need to work out whether it's profitable so is that 140,000 less is it the 60,000 less was it 48,000 gives me a profit figure is it just check I think of 32,000 yeah, that's correct isn't it so it's a profitable contract so therefore it will be based upon the stage of completion isn't it and that stage of completion is 40 percent per the question so is that there is 12,800 so if I'm thinking about my profits in statement of profit or loss that's based on is it your 12,800 based upon your profitability isn't it okay uh, revenue is based upon a percentage complete so is it 40 percent complete and it's 40 percent of the total revenue of 140,000 I just look up just to check on my answer that just above left of camera is that 40 56,000 isn't it uh, I can put the cost in as a balancing figure the cost that you have recognized in profit or loss are 43,200 okay excellent there we go uh, moving on to the statement of profit or sorry moving on from the statement of profit or loss onto the statement of financial position uh, the profits to date well it's the first year of the project so we don't really need to do anything cumulatively do we it's just one year's worth of profits but if there was two years, we'd need to add on the previous years. Uh, so that's 12,800. Uh, the progress billings that we had to date, they are there at 45,000. So we can put in that 45,000 as a reduction. Uh, the bit you need to be careful of is the costs to date. How much have we actually spent that has been used within this current year? Uh, so what you've got is the cost that you've incurred for December X5 are just based upon what has actually been completed. Nothing to do with the future years. Yes, we have that inventory, but that will be there in future years. So that's going to be deferred until a later period we will recognize that cost when we actually physically use the inventory once that inventory goes in and becomes part of the building that we are constructing so my costs to date are there as 52,000 and if you total that up does that give you 19,800 uh, if you wanted, and I'll just move the screen down ever so slightly. Now, you could also, I suppose, go through there with the information and put in your receivables, couldn't we? Because the receivables starts off with that progress billings figure of 45. 
and then we also have as well isn't it that cash received of 26500 so i will go through there from that 45 i would deduct 26000 500 which gives me is it 18,500 excellent there we go uh that's looking at the statement of financial position i don't think an exam question at this level of f2 given its objective test and given the you know small questions i genuinely don't think that you would be asked to work out the profit or loss figures to then feed into your statement of financial position because you know it's difficult to get around the continuity marks there isn't it you know if you make a mistake in profit or loss it feeds into the sfp so i think the question within the exam will be a little bit simpler with a, a pure focus on the statement of financial position so have a go at some of those questions see how it all works out that's covered your construction contract so i shall see you all a little bit later on on the next part of the syllabus